ones. Um, probably most popular is the top one, approval. So approval is a very flexible uh, but somewhat simple uh, workflow where you can um, uh, basically route the document around for approval. Uh, you can be do serial or parallel. Uh, it's all configured through the UI. So you go and just already create a workflow to a list, a library, uh, a content type, and you can be up and running and have an approval workflow with, with literally no development work at all. This is a box. Uh, it's pretty powerful. And if it doesn't meet your needs, as we're going to talk about in a minute, you can use this workflow as a starting point and edit it and edit it in the designer and, and tweak it. Uh, there's collect feedback, which is kind of what it sounds like, signatures, disposition approval, publishing approval, and three state. Three state is an interesting one. Three state is commonly called the issues workflow. Because uh, issue, like if you have a ticket tracking list, you'll commonly have issues that are uh, open and then resolved and then maybe closed. So you have three states. You can decide what the three states are, but it knows how to move between those states intelligently. Again, these are all out of the box workflows. You don't have to do any work aside from so <coughs> to, your, uh, to your items. Okay. So now we're going to talk about Visio. Um, Visio is really nice. I'm going to show it to you in a moment. And this is really what it is. Workflow is to begin the workflow development life cycle process. So, as a business analyst or as, you know, even a developer who wants to just start uh, developing a workflow, you can come into Visio, you have your shapes, which are correspond to activities, and you can start dragging these on the surface, uh, wiring them up. Uh, but you're not really, aside from defining the order, you're not really doing, you're not really defining any uh, logic per se. You're not, if you have like an if, uh, an if junction. You're not really specifying what what logic I'm doing, right? Like if if uh, the the PO amount is thousand dollars, I'm not really defining that. I'm defining the shape logically, but someone's going to come in later, take what I've done in Visio and import it into a different tool, and define this logic that I'm talking about. <clears throat> so <coughs> once I'm done in Visio, I don't really have anything, but something that's ready to import into the Circle Designer. That's all I have. Uh, and it's a VWI file, and, and the cool thing is I can go back and forth between SharePoint Designer and Visio. If, if let's say, uh, I do some work in Visio, I hand it off to uh, someone who has SharePoint Designer capabilities, uh, they, they, they give it back to me. I can import it back in and see what they've done, if this is good or not, and I can see a visual representation of the work that they've done. So that's kind of a nice, a nice feature. Can so, you continue to edit? I'm sorry? Can you continue to edit yes, in Visio? Yes, you can. Yeah, it's it, it, it's very good about not breaking breaking things between going back and forth. And one of the the the, the biggest reasons uh, I can use Visio uh, if you're going to end up deploying a SharePoint designer workflow would be to provide useful uh, labels to your shapes. And I, I'll show you right now, actually, because uh, you can you can create what's called workflow visualizations, to where if you go to your workflow status screen, you can see actually a visualization. Of, uh, using Visio services of your workflow and what point you are. And if you did not start in Visio, these shapes are just going to say things like if, you know, and not, not full information. So Visio is the only tool that can be used to actually provide useful context around what those shapes are doing, which is kind of strange. You can't do that in, in design. So, like I mentioned, um, I'm just going to start creating some. Does anyone, I, I thought it would, might be kind of fun to, to create a, if anyone had an idea for a workflow, I could create one. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. I was going in the category. So that's something that involves a QA process. Okay. Getting something to be QA'd and then... Like a software bug? Yeah. Or, uh, or uh, a yeah. ticket? Yeah, anything. Uh, a, a document that needs to be created by a person and QA'd by another person and maybe go back and forth. Sure, okay. We'll try to do something like that. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch Visio. And this is only in what version of Visio? There's only one version of Visio that has this, and it is Visio Premium. So you have to have Visio Premium to support workflow stuff. Um, and you'll see this uh, Microsoft SharePoint workflow uh, template. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click that. And then I'm going to get my shapes area over on the left. I'm going to get my design surface over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to get my, uh, I have a new uh, ribbon tab up here called process, and we'll go through that. So let's see, what would we need to do for this, this uh, review? Uh, I, I guess maybe the first thing we would do is we start. So I'm going to drag a start shape up there. And maybe then 
I would start, uh, actually this one's, this one's kind of easy. Uh, there's already a, a tab <coughs> called Google Process, and even though it, it looks simple and it says just start a Google Process, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and once I import this into SharePoint Designer, um, I'll show you, show you what that looks like. Um, so we'll start the approval process. Uh, we'll connect these shapes up. That was pretty easy. Uh, and then maybe we'll email, after that's over, we'll email the originator, and then maybe we'll finish. And I'll wire that up. So that's it. So um, I can change, what, what I mentioned was mentioning this gentleman right here about um, annotating these with a little more, as you can see, it's like start approval process, send an email, it doesn't say who I'm sending the email to, it doesn't specify anything, and you notice I'm not, I don't get to specify parameters in here. This is all, literally all I'm doing in Visio. I'm just laying these things out. Um, so begin, um, document, QA, approval process. And then, you know, email, document, owner, process. You know, that's a good idea. I was just thinking that. So let's, so let's say, uh, and, and one of the things you're, when you're developing here, some of these, some of these actions um, aren't really that obvious, like compare data source. Well, what does that mean? But that's really an if statement, right? So I'm going to say, uh, compare data source, I'm going to say if or, or, you know, document approved. And if it was an email, if it was was not approved, I guess. Let's say, let's say we'll do that. And it's actually going to make me, if I, so now, let me, let me, what to do here. Uh, there's a check diagram button up here in this process tab. We'll go ahead and click that, and it's going to bark at me. Because I have a condition shape, and I don't have uh, branches that have, one that has a yes and one that has a no. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one say uh, no. I'm going to change this to say document. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this guy um, over to the end and make that guy a yes. So we, don't, we only want to get notified if it's and I'm going to click my check diagram again, and we are good to go. So, before I before I exit out of here, there's a, there's a bunch of other activities, as you can see, um, assign to do items, start approval, add a comment. Um, you know, I can pause for duration. I can pause until Tuesday. Um, I can do all kinds of stuff. This is not this this these these actions will correspond to other actions. Uh, in, in SharePoint Designer. SharePoint Designer has more actions. It's kind of funny. Uh, Windows Workflow Foundation calls them activities, but for whatever reason, um, the Sharp and Visio people decide to call them actions. They're the same thing. Um, but, you know, you can send document to uh, repository, uh, set approval status, you can enter things out. So you can do quite a bit in here. Uh, and really, I, yes, ma'am. Actually, this this approval process activity will take care of all of that. Okay, Yeah, and when I get into the SharePoint Designer, I'll really show you how this one activity is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and first save this. Uh, we'll call it SPSKC Workflow. This is a visual uh, Visio workflow interchange file, which is going to again be used to import into SharePoint Designer. So now I'm done here. I've, I've done all I can. Um, so not super exciting, but you know you can kind of see how this could be used for uh, design review meetings um, and, and really just kind of showing people what what the process does. Couldn't you have done that with the out of the box one? I'm sorry. Couldn't you have done this with the out of the box one? Yes. 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 Uh, so yeah, I mean, her, her, no. Her her question was, couldn't you have done something like this 
uh, in in the out of the box world? And the answer is, is yes. Uh, but the point is just to show you how this works. Um, uh, okay. So now let me hop back to the slides real quick. And so what we'll do when I once I start talking about triple designer, uh, I will go in and import this in and show you how that works. So SharePoint Designer, there is a lot new here. Um, in my opinion, SharePoint Designer are now finally at a point where you know I think they're actually usable in real life scenarios. <laughs> Whereas in, in, in SharePoint 2007, uh, I had a lot of reservations about recommending them to anything but the most simplest solution in the smallest scope of work. Uh, but now because you can do things like reuse your workflows, um, you can do different scopes, uh, there are new activities, you can, there, there's much more support for controlling the security context in which the workflow is running. Um, it's just much more feature rich uh, that you can do without writing a lick of code. Um, which is always what you hear, right? So it's always the problem, no code, no code. In this case, I think you know, a lot of it is, is kind of true. Um, so let's start new actions. Some new actions are parallel. Before in, in, in SharePoint Designer uh, workflow, you couldn't do things in parallel. I mean, that's like one of the uh, most basic things about workflow. It's like, I want to do this and this at the same time. Well, now, now you can do that. Um, you could, another simple one, but it's kind of set the workflow status. Uh, and that means the little status string that you see in the document library. You know, if the workflow is in progress, because before with, with designer workflows, you would, you know, uh, in progress, completed, or canceled, you know, some boring status, but now you can set your own custom statuses. Um, utility actions like uh, parsing strings and Doing doing uh, calculations on date times and things like that, uh, very simple and kind of boring things, but very useful for doing uh, logic. And uh, I, I gave this guy his own bullet point, but he's really uh, an, an action as well. And this is the approval uh, task that we've been talking about. I've been alluding. Um, it is super powerful. In, in SharePoint 2007, you couldn't manage the lifecycle of a task uh, with within of one workflow. So you create a task, and now that task is gone, and the task is over in its own task list, and you can't really watch it. Uh, so if you were any kind of task management, you'd have to create another workflow that runs on the task list to manage your tasks. And now you have two workflows managing really what should be one workflow. So now task processes are awesome. They, they manage a complete life cycle of a task. And the first time I saw how powerful uh, all the capabilities they give you to manage the task are really, really blown away. They, I think they really want the extra mile to, to uh, go from zero to sixty on managing tasks in the workflow. Considering tasks is like the thing in the workflow, um, the designer is much improved in my opinion. Uh, you have the ribbon bar now, I mean, just like anything else in Office. You have the ribbon bar. Um, you can now, uh, so you get this cursor. They give you the, the sense of you know I'm typing my workflow. I don't know, you know, you can start saying assign, and then you get a list of things that will autocomplete, and you can ask. Um, I talked about the task process. Reusable workflows. In, in 2007, you could not, um, did anyone work with SharePoint Designer workflows in 2007? <laughs> I, I was rolling your eyes earlier. I figured <laughs> you had been. Um, you could not reuse your workflows. Um, so you would, at design time, before you even start creating your workflow logic, you'd have to choose uh, the library that you're going to associate to in the site you're going to associate to. And that was it. it. It couldn't move anywhere. You couldn't use it on another list in another farm. You couldn't promote it to dev to, 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 you know, to production. Uh, there were hacks that you could do. You, know, you could import these things and, you know, through back doors into Visual Studio and then deploy it, but it was not uh, really worth it. So that is just a really big deal. And the fact that you can also do site workflows in, in, uh, in, in SharePoint Designer is a big deal. So that, that's a brand new feature in Workflow 2010. Then they added that into the Designer. Security impersonation is a big deal. So now, uh, by default, um, the workflow is running as the uh, under the context of the uh, of the creator, meaning like whoever created the, the start of the workflow. Excuse me. Uh, but you, if, if, as the author, I can specify a block where the security context will be that of the workflow author. So if the workflow author has more rights, uh, and you mess with 